After they disappeared, the mute queen came to the tunnel. She peered and tried to open the passage, but couldn't. When Ravi Dasan opened the door, she could not see the opening as she was standing at a distance. She was sure that at least one of the two would return there. So she decided to wait there. Her hopes were not in vain. After sending Ravi Dasan outside, Saman Sambhavan came back there. He had a torch in his hand. But it burned fainter than before. He spoke so boldly to Ravi Dasan. However, it was clear from the way he looked around that he was not panicked. Near the opening of the tunnel he sat down in panic. The light went out for a while. Then he often looked up at the calculator on the top of the wall. The light that came in through it was fading little by little. After the light had dimmed well and the sun had set he began to reopen the tunnel. Now Mandakini came and stood near it. The path is open, Saman Sambhavan went down into it. Then in that dungeon, very recently, he heard a lingering screech. Saman Sambhavan has seen many horrors in his lifetime. Yet he had never heard such an unearthly sound. It seemed that if there was such a thing as a ghost and a voice, it had to be like this. When he heard the voice for the first time, Sambhavan hesitated, he waited until the echo stopped. When he heard that voice for the second time, all the hair on his body stood on end. After hearing it a third time even more recently, his resolve was shaken. He started running blindly in that dark dungeon without paying attention to the direction. As he disappeared the dumb queen went down the path. After going down some steps it was flat. She said leave it and walked away. Saman Sambhavan saw her come down and came back, walking so quickly that he could not have caught her. It seemed like a not so distant dark road to hell. But there was an end to it. Above where the steep wall ended the gap was slightly visible. A few steps were also visible. As he climbed through them, he suddenly hit his head. Small gaps were found between the steps of the underpass and the headland above. She entered one of them and came out. Huge giant figures were seen all around. As she had seen gigantic statues in the island of Elam, the sight did not shock her. She carefully observed where the path she came out of ended. The ten-headed Ravana was carrying Kaila Angiri with his twenty hands. Shiva and Parvati were sitting on top of the hill. Where Ravana lifted the mountain, there was a hollow below. His twenty hands were supporting the mountain that was lifted up. She knew that she had entered the sculpture hall through the gap between two of those arms. The layman never knows that there is such a passage under Kaila Angiri. No one even thinks of going down and looking under it. It was the perfect hideout even to hide in time. Shiva and Parvati were sitting on top of the hill. Where Ravana lifted the mountain, there was a hollow below. His twenty hands were supporting the mountain that was lifted up. She knew that she had entered the sculpture hall through the gap between two of those arms. The layman never knows that there is such a passage under Kaila Angiri. No one even thinks of going down and looking under it. It was the perfect hideout even to hide in time. Shiva and Parvati were sitting on top of the hill. Where Ravana lifted the mountain, there was a hollow below. His twenty hands were supporting the mountain that was lifted up. She knew that she had entered the sculpture hall through the gap between two of those arms. The layman never knows that there is such a passage under Kaila Angiri. No one even thinks of going down and looking under it. It was the perfect hideout even to hide in time. The layman never knows that there is such a passage under Kaila Angiri. No one even thinks of going down and looking under it. It was the perfect hideout even to hide in time. The layman never knows that there is such a passage under Kaila Angiri. No one even thinks of going down and looking under it. It was the perfect hideout even to hide in time. Mandakini wandered around the Akilap Mandapam for a few hours, gazing at the wonder of the sculptural tunnel. Although the light was very dim, everything was clearly visible to her sharp eyes, accustomed to seeing at night. In one place, one of the ancestors of the Chola clan, Sibik Chakraborty, was depicted in the form of a statue, cutting off the flesh of his body to save the life of a pigeon. Cholas got the title of champion because they were born in C.P.'s dynasty. 
After taking a keen look at the sculpture the mute queen passed away. A sculpture depicted the river Ganges falling from the giant Lord Shiva Siris. Bhagaratan was standing nearby waving his hands. The falling river Bhagarati entered through the mouth of a gigantic rishi, out through the ear. There was a little sage in the Gunga that had come out like that, and was drawing water in a bottle. He must be a Gastya who is known as Kuru Munivar. He overturned the bottle on another small hill. The rising river from Kundagai was getting bigger and bigger. This sculpture must have provided for the overflow of water in the Ganges and Kaveri when they were erected. But now there is no water in them. The Kaveri stretched and meandered its way through rocky outcrops and wooded oases. There were many Shiva temples on either side of it. At the point where the Kaveri finally merges into the sea, there was the wall of the sculpture hall. Suspicious of something, the dumb queen pressed her hand against the wall and a small door opened. The exit through it is the palace garden. Beyond it were seen the noble vaults of the palace more recently. She looked around, in the light of the faint dusk evening, it was clear that there was no one in the garden. Here too the trees were broken and fallen, just as they had fallen in the garden of the gardener. Therefore anyone in the garden could not have seen her emerge from the sculpture hall. She stood by the sculpture hall and waited for it to get dark. Maybe that Yamakangaran with work in hand will come. Therefore, she often peeked into the sculpture hall as well. Here too the trees were broken and fallen, just as they had fallen in the garden of the gardener. Therefore anyone in the garden could not have seen her emerge from the sculpture hall. She stood by the sculpture hall and waited for it to get dark. Maybe that Yamakangaran with work in hand will come. Therefore, she often peeked into the sculpture hall as well. Here too the trees were broken and fallen, just as they had fallen in the garden of the gardener. Therefore anyone in the garden could not have seen her emerge from the sculpture hall. She stood by the sculpture hall and waited for it to get dark. Maybe that Yamakangaran with work in hand will come. Therefore, she often peeked into the sculpture hall as well. One by one the lamps of the palace started burning. For a while, the whole palace appeared as one Jagajyoti. The lamps lit in the lower rooms cast light outside through the windows. The lamps lit in the lofts blazed vying with the stars of the sky. Alas! The night seems more dangerous than the day. Thought Mandakini. She took a good look around the palace. She noticed that only the part of the palace near the sculpture hall did not have many lights. Badeka, who had tried to kill Selvak Kumaran, his lifeblood whom he had rescued from the Kaveri flood in Sri Lanka, and his companion stood on the top floor in this part of the palace. This is the place where Ravi Dasan took a job from another and looked like someone was throwing a punch. Fortunately, there are not too many lights in this area. What could be the reason for that? Good, that too will be known soon. As soon as it was well past sunset and the palace gardens were darkened, Mandakini rushed from the door of the sculpture hall with the speed of a deer and reached the palace. At the rear of the palace were circular corridors and rows of pillars supporting them, and in many places stairs leading up to the main floor. In the corridors, there were huge copper vessels used for cooking large feasts, faded ivory palanquins, chipped bronzes, and many other objects. After looking around for a while among them, Mandakini finally ventured up a flight of stairs. As below, the main floor had circular corridors with pictorial pillars supporting their roofs, carved colonnades and niches with marble platforms. Mandakini wandered around the lofty halls that seemed devoid of human traffic. She was very reluctant to go to the inner corners of the attic. At one place, she saw the light of the lamp coming from below and went there and peered into the pillar. Aha! What did she see? She saw scenes that she could not turn her eyes away from. In the middle of a spacious hall, a person was reclining on a carved couch. Around him stood four women and two men. It was evident from their appearance that they were reverent towards the one who was lying down. At a little distance stood two nurses with even greater reverence. Only one lamp was lit in the hall. It was also fixed on the lamp post near the bed and was giving off a dim light. Mandakini first saw the people standing around. She learned that one of them was Pungazali, 
the daughter of her dead brother. She has also seen others from hidden places a few times before. But we don't know who they all are. Looking at the people standing around, Mandakini looked at the person lying on the bed with great reluctance. Her chest froze for a moment. Yes, he is the one. A long time ago, which can be said to be so many ages ago, when she was a little girl running and playing and wandering in the woods, she was a man who came to a certain place and stole her soul and life. He was the one who made the island where he lived a paradise for some time. It was he who was taken by the people who came in the big ship. Aha! How he has changed now! Mandakini has seen him many times without recognizing him, even after those days of what can be called a previous birth. She has seen him hiding in the thick bushes on the banks when he went on pleasure boats on the river Kaveri. On the streets of the cities, she stood and watched as the procession came in a golden chariot with white veils. But it's been a while since I last saw him. He has changed in that time. A beard and mustache had grown on his face. Cheeks were sticky and dry, wrinkles in the forehead. Aha! Uh -huh. Where has the magnetic light that once resided in those eyes gone? God! Can people change like this? On the island of Ceylon, the mute Queen Mandakini saw many victims of the deadly fever dying after a long fever. Aha! Uh -huh. His weed-covered face, which was once shining like the golden sun, has changed so much. Perhaps his last days are near. Suddenly Mandakini remembered the terrible scene he had seen that evening. The murderer Ravi Dasan and his companion stood where she was standing. It was from there that they saw the target. Maybe they were aiming to throw it at the person lying on the bed? Mandakini's whole body shivered with this memory. Brought round the eyes, it felt like fainting. She managed to stand on her feet, holding the pillar tightly.